for position. And this is to help prove to everyone that we don't put those yellow rings in the exact same spot. And it's a new pattern Doc has to pick through every time she does this demonstration. Looks like we're going with a spread out decoy method here today. That looks pretty tricky. Looks like we're planning on the last final hiding spot for those yellow ones. Beautiful. Looks like it's getting pretty tricky. Doc's looking a little bit nervous here. Hopefully she'll be able to figure out this problem. All right, we'll put her straight to work and see if she can find those yellow rings. Waddles right onto the table. Sees the first one right at the first corner and has to move the red one to get it. She's gonna have to waddle all the way across the table. Puts it up there. See if she can get the second one though. It looks like it's all the way at the other corner. And she spotted it. She says, you can't fool me. I certainly can see in colors. Let's hear a great big round of applause for Doc and our brave volunteer. Now a common question we do often get asked here is how come your birds don't fly away on you? Well, for fully flighted birds like our crows and our kookaburras, a lot of training has gone into keeping them here in the show area. But for our macaws like Sergeant here, a military macaw, we've taken the necessary precautionary measure of trimming off a few of their primary flight feathers. It doesn't hurt the, hurt the birds at all. It'd be like you or I getting our hair cut or trimming our fingernails, as there's no blood flow or nerve endings running through those feathers. So you, Sergeant, let's give everyone a big wing wave. After he stops preening those little feathers, there you go. What about a wing wave, Sarge? There we go. Just to show we don't cut off all those longer feathers, just a few in the center. So if he ever gets scared, he's not going to fall to the ground, but simply glide down to safety. But as you can see, being carried around all day certainly isn't the most stylish method of transportation. And Sarge here considers himself to be a bit of a daredevil. So he'd much prefer to travel at higher heights on his very own two-wheel high-wire bicycle. Well, this high wire here is about seven feet off the ground. Little Sarge there is only mere one foot tall, though, so we like to make sure the bike's on here good and steady. Okay, it looks great now, apart from being a daredevil, though, Sergeant is a trained professional, so don't try this at home. Oh All right, and off the way he goes, pulling his little football legs as fast as he can. Already at the halfway point, last couple pushes to the end, Sarge. And he's done. Let's hear a great big round of applause for our amazing daredevil football. Now, as you can see, we do like to exercise our birds physically, but it's very important to us to stimulate them mentally here in captivity. So we have a little bit of a mind teaser set up. The props are pretty simple. All it is is a cup attached to a rope attached to a perch. Put the bird's favorite treat into that cup, place them up on top of that perch, and they have to figure out how to get down to it. So we'll start with Monty, our green wing macaw, and see how she's figured this out. She's decided she's just going to slide down that pole with fireman style, wait till her head's level with that cup, she pops her head in, and she's got her treat, no problem. Oh, no one seems too impressed with Monty's method. I do think she made that look pretty easy, though. Do keep in mind, she had to figure that out all on her own. Birds are individuals, though, just like you and I, and they've been known to come up with their own methods to figure out this problem. Cagney here is one of our older birds in our collection, though, so I'm not too sure if she's perhaps lazy or maybe even wiser in old age. But she says, why would I waste all my energy going all the way down there? I can just hoist the whole thing up to me. Certainly not a foolproof method, though, as she has to deal with this very difficult cup handle, goes all the way in and gets it just the same. Well done, Cagney. Now, I do have one last question for you all, and I know you know the answer, so shout it out to me. What are parents most famous for? Talking, exactly right. Now, contrary to popular belief, it's not the larger birds like the macaws you see here that make the better talkers. It's actually the smaller ones, like the Amazons, the African Grace, even some of the budgies and cockatiels some of you may have at home. Now joining us now are two of our star little chatterboxes. On the far side is Wasabi, and he's our three-year-old yellow-fronted Amazon. Joining him is three-year-old yellow-crowned Amazon, Eddie. They're quite chatty, we think they're going to get a few things to, uh, to say from them. All right, I think we'll get Sergeant over here started off by saying a little bit of a hello, so everyone can get a really good comparison to how well those Amazons do speak. <laughs> Alright, well that is Sergeant's version of hello. It's kind of hard to understand. Hopefully Doc can do a little bit of a better job here for us. <laughs> yes, definitely a little bit easier to understand. Now, as Megan did say, these birds are only three years of age, but they've been learning to talk since they were about four months, and they are very chatty. They normally as well like to start off by greeting the audience. <laughs> yes, and now she normally likes to follow that up with a little nosy question. Yeah, she is a very nosy little bird. Wasabi over here, though, he's a little bit more polite with his question. How are you? How are you? 
I do see a lot of smiles out there, Wasabi. Now, you can't actually tell by looking at uh, the parrots in the parrot family that it is a male or a female because they do look exactly identical. We normally rely on DNA testing to determine which of our birds is a male and which is a female. However, for Eddie over here, we should have known she was a female. She always lets us know when she sees a pretty male Amazon. I said a pretty male. Yes, indeed, she is quite the little flirt. She doesn't stop there, though. When she gets those boys up nice and close, she loves to blow them a kiss. 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 Yeah. <laughs> a couple quiet smacks from our flirt. Now, these two are very playful by nature, and they have a favorite game to play with their trainers. tickle is we normally will give in to temptation we'll go over to their cage and we'll give them a little tickle sometimes they like to trick us though and they'll turn around and give us a little bite and I think it's because they like what we say when they bite 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 ow, 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 ow. bite ow, ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yes unfortunately we do say ow quite a few times now these two are very musically talented as well they love to sing and dance I think we'll get wasabi warmed up here a little bit first though <laughs> <laughs> Alright, he sounds perfectly in key to me. Now do keep in mind though when you hear them sing, they learn to sing from us. We're honest enough to admit we're terribly off key ourselves. So try to use your imaginations when you hear this next song. <laughs> sounds a little bit like Oh Canada to me there. They are very patriotic little birds. I think Eddie might like to sing it as well. <laughs> Still working on it, but they are very patriotic. They are also very hard-working little birds, and I think Wasabi has picked up on where he works. <laughs> yes, he does work right here at African Lions of Fire. We have a little bit of a motto. We like all our guests to have a nice wild day. Go wild. Go wild. Go wild. Yes, a nice go wild normally does the trick, and I think they have one last thing to add to all of this. And little foot waves, little foot waves, and they are exactly correct. Unfortunately, that does bring us to the end of our show. We hope you'd enjoy meeting all of our birds. We will bring a few of the macaws up right to the front right now, so if you'd like to ask our trainers any questions or take any pictures, feel free to do so. And a friendly reminder, there will be a Birds of Prey flying demonstration in about 10 minutes in the conservation area. And we also have Abigail, one of our Indian flying foxes. So hope you enjoy that.